Hi, everybody. Welcome to the QB School. I am JT O'Sullivan. Today, Grayson McCall. You asked for it. You got it. A little Coastal Carolina fire. Let's get it going. Welcome to the QB School. So the idea for this video came from Elmer Lopez Loza. You should look at Grayson McCall. He's a stud. Elmer, appreciate the suggestion. Here you go. You asked for it. Let's get it going. Coastal Carolina versus BYU. Grayson McCall. Massive win. Big win versus BYU. Not a massive day throwing it. Nice day running it. 68 yards rushing it. Right here, first one. I'm going to say this is one of my least favorite ways to do four verts here, just quarterback-wise. This looks like three cloud up top. Then we're going to get four verts out of three by one. What's going on here? We're just doing normal four verticals out of this. To me, that usually means variation West Coast terminology, like that all go special route, seam, best release go, best release go. And that's where the ball ends up going down here to the bottom of the screen. Misses it off its line. Why I think he misses it? To me, it's because he's like messing with this middle field player. Three double cloud for me, meaning three deep. So that's the three deep. The cloud corner, rolled up corner up here. So kind of a funky way to get there versus this formation. Don't see a whole lot of this. But at the end of the day, it's just one-on-one -on -one down here. And he he's like creating this, I think just making life way more difficult, coming back here and pumping this thing like unnecessarily. If he just took three, used his eyes, I think he'd be a lot more consistent in his throw. You just don't see this technique a lot on this type of play because it just makes it so much harder. Like catch and pump. I don't know. What are you pumping? I think that safety was going to run over there regardless. Really a nice best release go down here at the bottom of the screen. You'd love to just put it right down the line and be a big play early. Instead, the wide receiver is running at the bottom of the numbers. That ball hits closer to the sideline, halfway between the numbers and the sideline. So just a miss, and I think he did it to himself. We got a little soldier field here end zone. Just the worst end zone you can see. The flagpole right down the hash. That's a nightmare. Pump. And it certainly impacts 23, but I think he was already going that way. It's just really hard to do that. Come back and throw an accurate go back the other way. So, tough right out the gate. Right here, a little RPO. Speed out into the boundary. Nice that they were able to get the completion. I love the anticipation. It's a cool design of a play. Probably the only thing else I would say about this throw is it comes off his hand kind of like a changeup. Now pure scheme wise here, this is just a speed out up top and how it's tethered into what they're doing run scheme wise. They do a bunch of really cool stuff run game wise, but that is a tough throw when you're going to do any sort of fake read. I don't care who you're reading, whether it, you know, the number box count, uh, apex defender, alley defender, whatever it is, if you're going to fake something and read something, and then try to throw what I'm going to call as an anticipation speed out, it's tough. And so you have to have the arm strength to get it up and down, and he really barely does here. So, again, he goes to throw that thing. Nice anticipation. Look at it. Break his hand right here. The wide receiver is not even at the 15 yet. Not out of the break. But he's barely able to get that thing up and down, and really that's only a college catch. We'll run it full speed here. Love the anticipation. Interesting design. I think really tough to execute. But when you see it from the end zone, I think I have some arm strength questions. That thing just comes off high. You know, high and hot. And normally I would say you love a good kind of easy catchable ball up on his face, but that's borderline like circle change. But he comes right back and throws an out to the left. This time off a little bit different release. My favorite throw of the game. A little pocket movement up. To the number two, dime from the far hash. So certainly looks like he has the arm strength right here. This is a cool designed play. Not a lot of options if this isn't there, but pocket movement, base, really accurate throw, tough, difficult throw. What's going on here? They are running that little, what I'm most often used to calling a little orbit motion. We're going to come across, fake this thing post which is really dead because there's nothing to hold any of these back players and then the the way where the ball ends up going kind of a tough release up and then he's running this out really versus corner who's got his rear turned to the sideline and just cannot 
turn and make that play. But you have to be able to play fake, move in the pocket, and make that throw all the way on the sideline away from a corner with a tight end sniffer wing type. So nothing easy about this. This is a very impressive throw. Love the pocket movement. Love the accuracy. Love the base. Again, quick little shuffle. You can see when he lets that thing go, the, just barely out of the break. You can see that technique of the corner up top, letting that post go. Got it. And that's a beautiful throw. My goodness, right on the money, on the sideline. Love it. So certainly looks to have the arm strength here. Again, just a little inconsistent starting this thing off, spinning it this game. Next one here, this is sprint right option or a variation of it, motion to it. We're going to get a little rub route and then into the flat. He doesn't like it. I think you can make the argument that you could probably throw it to the flat or the corner or back to the flat. Definitely can't take a sack when you're outside the pocket here. A little Elvis Gerback special. Fast way to piss off offensive line coaches. You've got to throw the ball away at worst right there. So what do I mean sprint right option? This is an old football passing concept. Where you're going to motion to it. A bunch of different ways to do it. Whether it's short, short motion, motion across the formation. You're really going to get a flat here. And it's usually going to come with some variation of a pick or rub. So it's usually here pick this thing so now we are into the flat and that's usually one this thing usually turns into a corner or a back line if he doesn't run the pick that's usually two and then right here the play the part that i really love about this play is when you don't get the flat you turn up get into the end zone and then come front pylon so the read here is usually one to two to three throw away stands or in an offense that does it at a high level, in my opinion, three pylon, four throw away. But really, in my opinion, this could be, you're reading this corner. I think he could probably come out here and put it on the flat, first of all. Definitely throw it high back five for a touchdown to this corner and or back to the pylon. So really misses four here for me. And again, don't love the concept. Don't love cutting the field in half with these sprint plays. But flat right there, put it on him. Catch it. Let him get to the pylon. If not, the corner is there. Corner throws up the mailbox, left-hand mailbox. Throw it. High back five. Throw it at that back corner official. If not, right there on the front pylon again, on the left hand, away from the near defender. But can't do that. Maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe doesn't. Again, full speed here just to see kind of the tempo of this thing. Flat. No. Corner. Uh, pylon, Yes. So, I think some areas there to make plays, especially in these really crucial downs in the red area, that could potentially, you know, just would love to see a few more plays flash here, especially throwing the ball. You know, less than 100 yards throwing. Yes, it's a big game. Yes, you're confined by the, the scheme offense of the drop back world for them, but there were some opportunities for plays to be made. Here's another one, a little off platform. To me, I think he kind of skips through some reads here. I think they get him with a holding here as well, so it wouldn't have mattered, but still doesn't change the fact that he misses this throw by about five yards. So up top, we're going to get kind of a flat circus route. So the read is really kind of up top first, and they're going to have the number two get into the flat, and really this is just a high-low on the corner. Here's that little circus seven, and then on the back, we're going to run the same type of thing, just inverted. And I really think that the ball probably ends up going here. This is usually just a one two, three, four, all the way back to where they end up getting to the five here. But if you get all the way back here to this five, he can make this throw. This guy's wide open. But again, I don't love seeing guys skip over routes on this kind of three right here. To me, just go through the play, play the play as it's designed to be played from the pocket until you have to break structure. So no up top. Everybody run up and break to the right. No up top, one, two, yes to three right there. That's open enough. If you're going to get all the way back to five, eventually right there, you can make that throw. No one around him by 10 yards. Nice, easy flick. Put it on him. So just a little bit of the inconsistency, whether drop back. Again, we can see that shallow come across. So I think he gets himself in trouble a little bit with his footwork. Drifting for no reason right there. Maybe that white flashes. But come back and put it on that shallow right there. That's enough space where you can put it right on him. 
Again, if you're worried that he's going to run into a collision, get all the way back to the check down, great, but got to be able to make that throw. Halftime, you dig the channel and you haven't already, please subscribe, hit the bell, get the notifications. It lets you know when we go live, when we put out new content. I appreciate the support for the channel. Then if you're looking for even more Quarterback School content, hop over to the Quarterback School Patreon community. The link is in the description to the video. Longer format videos over there, really what it's like to be in an NFL quarterback room. And then if you're looking for the Quarterback School best of the best video content, check out the courses. Got a bunch of different courses, courses on RPOs, how to beat every coverage, pass protection, quick game you name it the links are in the description let's keep the video going but some nice throws in here as well it wasn't all inconsistent a little hole shot here again rpo world had a few drops in this game to me this is a drop and the collision looks worse than it is because the drop makes the receiver kind of in a vulnerable spot this to me looks like a variation of an rpo they just get hit with a kind of a corner force defender watch that corner down here at the bottom of the screen He's going to get into the fit. We're just going to pull up and hit that kind of cat cobra adjustment. That's a nice throw, nice vision. Put it right on his throat. You got to catch that ball. So love the vision here. Really cool design of a play. You don't see very many collegiate quarterbacks being able to see those kind of corner cat blitzes and take advantage of them with beaters. Give his guy a shot. Just can't catch it for him. Again, thanks for the pull. Nice play, though. Next one here, a few out of platform, off platform, out of structure plays down to the bottom of the screen. He's going to say no to the quick out. I think potentially he could have thrown the quick out. He's going to say no to the check down, get outside the pocket, find the tight end working back across. So, all right, you don't like it, you don't like it. Get outside the pocket, great use of vision, nice accurate throw. Lots to like kind of at the second half of this play. Just reading the play out. Would you throw this quick out down here to the bottom of the screen? Maybe not with that apex defender out on top of the 30. Okay. To me, it's no to the quick out. Yes to the check down faster. Quick down, no. Check down, yes. So just right there. A little bit more patient in the pocket. Granted, he's got his little center getting walked back into his face. But would just throw the check down right there. Win from the pocket. But certainly a good enough athlete to get outside, break contain, and make plays when they're there to be made. Just would like to see it more consistent. You see flashes of it, so you certainly know he has the capacity to do it. Just maybe a little bit more consistent throwing the rock, whether it's in the pocket or outside the structure of the play. Another one here. Again, this time he does a nice job coming all the way back through the read, finding his guy so you can, again, you can see that he can do it. You know, This time I would say there, I would have some issues with just the construction of this play. We'll talk about from the wide, but again, nice job getting through his read there. A little kind of off angle throw as he's moving away. But this looks like just curl flat up top. And curl flat up top with an outside release. Again, verse three cloud. So we're playing cover three, but we're rotating to the right or up top, passing strength. When that hook goes outside, that, that's a bad feeling. That play is dead. No, nothing good. So nice job coming back. Again, a little bit toesy when he's moving. You can see his base go from that width to a little bit shallower pop up, but he's able to come all the way back and find that receiver. I think again, you know, this is probably more a complaint of the system of how Coastal's using their checkdowns, but would love to see that get out and be more of an option for him faster. So play fake, get out. So no up top, find the check down, be a little bit more precise. You know, that check down is drifting, kind of sloppy, fortunate that they're able to work back to that kind of reverse whip to be able to find the wide receiver for a big play. And this was a big play. One of the better kind of drop back throws in this game. So no, no, check down's not there. Stay alive, vision, drop the arm angle, real accurate throw, give your guy a shot going towards the end zone, love it. That's how you beat BYU right there. One more, just to give an example, he can certainly run. They run a bunch of different iterations of option. Right here, a little lead option. Again, I'm a big fan of the old old school quarterback kind of fake pitch on these option plays. This is when they're trying to run out the clock, a little four-minute offense, reading the defensive end, got enough wiggle, start and stop, acceleration. Probably not a dynamic runner, but certainly good enough at this level to be a threat. Doesn't look like he has quite that like top-end gear but wiggle enough to be able to make them pay, be honest, make good decisions in the run game. 
Again, we're reading that left defensive end. Sniffer's coming around as a lead blocker, so kind of a lead option. He takes the dive. Put that little move on right there. I'm a big fan of the fake pitch. Boop. There it is. Get vertical. Go make a play. Big win. So that is a wrap. Grayson McCall versus BYU. Some stuff to like. Certainly some off-platform stuff. Really interesting offense to break down uh, schematically. But quarterback-wise, probably left a few things out there as far as the passing game, the drop-back game. Didn't even get to 100 yards throwing it. Can certainly run it when he has to. I think some things to build off, some things to be excited about. But as far as like pop off the film, jump off the film, those types of plays, they weren't in this one. Probably take a peek at a few more games. Let me know what you think, what you thought of the video. Again, I appreciate the support. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.